unhelpful thinking styles, more details. Mental filter. Selective abstraction. This is a filtering in and filtering out process. You can think of a mental filter as sort of tunnel vision focusing on only one part of a situation and ignoring the rest. Usually, this means looking at the negative parts of a situation and forgetting the positive parts. What do you think the effect of this thinking style will have on the way you feel? Notice that in this example, you are dwelling on a single detail. Notice that the detail you're dwelling on happens to be negative. You have excluded other details of the whole picture, which means that you're not remembering all the other positive experiences. If you focus on this negative bit, then it is likely you'll keep on experiencing the negative feelings that go along with it. This process also happens with the way we remember things. All the memories of our life experiences are stored in our brains. Have you ever thought of what would happen if we remembered everything at once? We'd be pretty overwhelmed. It is natural that mental filtering occurs when we try to remember things. However, research has shown that when a person is depressed, they often remember events that are associated with negative, unhelpful feelings. If they keep dwelling on these memories, how do you think they would feel? Jumping to conclusions. Most of us would have heard the phrase, you're jumping to conclusions, meaning that a conclusion is being made without really knowing if there's any evidence to support it. Although we might like to think that we have a hunch, it is usually right. There are times when it's not right. We keep jumping to the wrong conclusion. There are two ways in which we can often jump to conclusions or conclusions that are usually negative. Mind reading and predictive thinking. Let's look at mind reading. As the name suggests, this is where we jump to conclusions because we assume that we know what someone else is thinking or we know the rationale behind someone else's behaviours. This happens to be a very common style of thinking. Have you had this experience? You're talking to someone and during the conversation they look at their watch. Perhaps you've thought, they must think I'm a really boring person. They don't want to be here with me. If you jump to these conclusions without looking closely at the evidence, such as the fact that the person is expecting an important phone call soon, do you think you'd end up feeling happy or distressed? Let's try another example. Your boss asks to see you. You instantly assume that you know why she wants the meeting. She's going to tell me that I'm not good enough for this job or she's upset with the way I'm doing things. If you believed your interpretation, which has been based on your mind reading, would you be happy or anxious? Often these conclusions are a reflection on how we think about ourselves. For example, oh, I think I'm boring or I think I'm not good enough. I always get things wrong. Often we jump to the conclusion that because we think poorly of ourselves, then others do too. Predictive thinking. We can also jump to conclusions when we start making predictions about what is going to happen on some future occasion. This is a very common way to increase anxiety and stress. These are often predictions where you overestimate the negative emotions or experiences you're going to encounter. Think through this example with me. Someone has asked you to give a talk to a group of people. You might think, I'm going to get in there and forget what I'm supposed to say, stumble over my words and completely stuff up the whole presentation and it's going to be terrible. You believe this despite the fact that you've delivered many successful presentations in the past. How might you feel if you believed this? Personalization. Can you think of some occasion when something hasn't gone quite as you wanted or the way you expected 
and you've blamed yourself totally for everything that's happened. The toast burns at breakfast and you blame yourself and not the toaster. Your child plays a wrong note at a concert and you blame yourself for making him practice harder. Without realising it, you relate external negative events to something you have or have not done. When you personalise something, you take total responsibility for external events occurring and ignoring other important factors. As a consequence, you end up blaming yourself for everything that goes wrong or that could go wrong, even when you may only be partly responsible or not responsible at all. If you were to consistently say to yourself, this is my fault, I'm to blame, how do you think you'd start to feel? Carrying 100% of the responsibility is a rather large burden to bear and one that's likely to leave you feeling discouraged and or overwhelmed. Catastrophizing. When someone says, you're blowing things out of proportion or you're making a mountain out of a molehill, chances are the person is catastrophizing. This style of automatic thinking often begins with the following phrase, what if? Or, oh no, let's try some examples, shall we? Oh my God, I have a chest pain. I might be having a heart attack. What if I disagree with my partner on this? Will I lose an important relationship? I felt depressed this morning. What if I stay depressed? All of these examples get at the essence of this unhelpful thinking style. That person views the situation as terrible, awful, dreadful, horrible. Notice the appearance of the other unhelpful thinking styles, a bit of predictive thinking and a lot of jumping to conclusions. Let's look at this final example. Have you ever submitted a project, perhaps at work, and then realised that you've made a small error? You might think, I can't believe I made that mistake. This is going to be a poor submission. I'm going to lose the account and probably lose my job. I'll probably never find work in this city again. What do you think would it be like for someone with this style of thinking? Even though the reality is that the problem itself is quite small. When we catastrophize, things can get very big very quickly and we can work ourselves up to a point where it all seems beyond our control. Black and white thinking, because you tend to see only one extreme or the other. With this thinking, you are right or wrong. You are good or bad. There are no in-betweens, no shades of grey and no middle ground.